Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net, and I have a fun mushroom fairy house painting tutorial to demonstrate for you today. And this is done on the 11 by 14 inch canvas. Of course, I use acrylic paints. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I am going to start off by painting the sky first and the, or the background, the sky around the, the mushroom house. And that's two colors, phthalo blue and titanium white. And I'm using a three quarter inch flat wash brush. I use student grade acrylic paints, a mixture of Liquitex Basics, Royal Essentials, and there's a few Art Americana and Artist Loft, um, but they're all very similar to each other as far as colors go. Um, and we are gonna go ahead and load our brush in water and then load it with the phthalo blue. So loading the brush with the water first and kind of distributing it into the paint um, is going to help with the flow of that color. And I'm going to do this entire background with these textured strokes, meaning I'm not going left and right. I'm not going up and down. I'm just kind of making um, sort of medium strokes that are going in angles and cross hatching each other. And I'm going to be blending that white here in a little bit. So I'm going to go about halfway down the canvas with this phthalo blue color. And it's a pretty thin layer of paint. I'm not caking it on there or anything. Pretty even all throughout. Um, with this textured thing, you're gonna get some strokes showing through so you can kind of go over those strokes a little bit if you don't want it to look too strokey. Um, and when you are about, I guess it's not halfway, about a quarter of the way down, you wanna grab a little bit of white on the brush and start adding that white into there. So that white is gonna gently blend with the phthalo blue and it's gonna blend by paint going over the colors. So I'm still doing those angular textured strokes um, with that white. And we don't wanna get super light too fast here. So that was just a teeny bit of white. We're just gonna gradually lighten our sky up as we work our way down. And I'm just kind of going back over some of my strokes at the top. Um, I like the texture in there with the with the strokes and that's why I'm doing it this way. If you don't like that style, you can always paint left and right strokes or up and down strokes. So if you like doing a different kind of sky, um, that's up to you. So this is just the, the background part piece. So if you did horizontal strokes across the canvas, that would be fine if you don't like the textured strokes. So I'm gonna gradually keep adding more white into my color and it's gonna get lighter and lighter as I work my way down. I'm gonna go almost all the way down this canvas, but I'm gonna leave about a two to three inch gap at the bottom and that's where our grassy area is gonna be. I didn't measure it, measure it, it was, I just estimated it and that's okay. Um, just continue to add more little bits of white to the tip of your brush as you work your way down to the bottom of the canvas and it'll blend on the canvas and then you can gently brush that color back up into the sky so it gradually gets darker at the top. You want to be careful up at the top, especially if that blue started to dry. It may not blend at all for you. Mine is still kind of wet up there, but I tend to paint fast and work fast so I can work my colors faster. If that blue is dry, it may not be best to try to blend it up. Um, you may want to add some more blue to your brush if you wanted to go back over that with like a second coat. Um, but blending the white back up there may not work as well if that blue was dry all the way and we don't want it to get too light up there and we don't want the sky to be all the same color. We want it to be kind of a gradient of the dark to the light at the bottom and that creates some really pretty contrast in our painting when we do it that way. So we're gonna do the ground next and um, I'm not gonna measure this, but it is about three inches of space on the bottom and it's gonna overlap some of our, at the bottom of our blue too, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna load our palette with two different green colors. Of course, I'm gonna rinse off my brush here too because we don't want any of that blue on the brush when we do this green grass. I'm still gonna use my three quarter inch flat brush here 
I'm going to grab two different greens. Um, this is a light olive green. The other one's a hooker's green hue permanent. Um, if you don't have those exact colors, you can use any light green, any dark green. And um, I'm just going to mix those two together. So it's going to make kind of a medium green um, shade of green. And I'm just going to apply this to the bottom. So a little bit of water in there helps with the flow. But um, there is grass in this painting. But for now, this is just going to be our first layer of paint down here at the bottom. So we can get that white canvas all covered up on the bottom. So I'm just going to add this color on the bottom. And it's going to overlap our blue a little bit. And um, go from there. So estimate about... Uh, I guess maybe like two and a half inches, three inches, and then fill in that area on the bottom. So left and right strokes. If you want um, to get kind of fancy here, you're going to have the back part be a little bit lighter so that creates some depth in your ground area, but you totally don't have to do that. It's not going to change the outcome of the painting too much if you don't do it exactly that way. But I like to grab white and kind of blend it up into the top part and I'm using the tip of the brush to get that line right there. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. There's going to be um, a lot of things covering that area there. So if it's curved or not or wavy, that's okay too. And just fill in, get all that white canvas covered up. You will need to wait for this to dry before going on to the next steps. You can take a break, you can get a hair dryer and dry it real quick. And then we're gonna be drawing our mushroom next. So rinse your brush off, set it to the side and uh, dry your painting or take a break and come back. This is a white chalk pencil and I'm gonna draw the mushroom house with this white chalk pencil and I'll link to the pencil where I got it in the description. But um, we're gonna start at the bottom and figure out where the base of our house will be. I'm about two or maybe one and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas. You wanna leave a little bit of space below there so we can do some fun cobblestone or other decorations that you wanna to add to your mushroom house. And I'm just gonna lightly sketch this mushroom so it's super wide at the bottom, but it gets kinda of narrow at the top. Um, it doesn't go to a point because we have our mushroom top over that piece and um, I'm going to play around with this mushroom piece. We're going to have it kind of um, go down sort of lopsided on the right here. So I have the, the bottom peach line thing and it curves to the right and then we're going to curve upwards and then I'm going to lightly have this um, I'm going to sketch this top part so it kind of it's sort of flat at the bottom but also curved and then it's going to go out to the side and then I'm going to have this piece kind of open up and go up over so we can see um, the under part of that mushroom top so we can do some fun texture underneath there as well. Um, sort of an asymmetrical design. And you can change this too if you wanted to simplify this drawing and have it be um, where it doesn't show that under piece. You can if you want. And I'm just going to kind of go back over my lines here. And this chalk does erase, it erases with water and it also erases with a, a regular eraser. The eraser on my pencil here uh, is used up all the way, but we can use a different eraser for that. So just gonna kind of go back over my lines here, have this piece go down a little bit further. And of course, when we paint this in, we can always, always adjust it to the way that we want it. Sometimes when you do the drawing, it's different, and then you start painting it in, and you kind of adjust your shape to the way the paint is going to go on it. So this is a pink eraser. I'm just going to kind of erase the lines that I don't want. And with this, had the top piece of that mushroom kind of dip in towards the right, give it more of an interesting shape to it. And our mushroom house has a chimney, so I'm going to draw the flute part of it. It's going to go upwards at an angle. And I'm going to draw the top piece of the mushroom on top of that chimney piece. 
this is a fun design that you can customize. There's so many different details that you can add to it. Um, I made my tutorial basic and simple, but you can change the colors. You can add things to it. You can add flowers, um, add a little mailbox. There's lots of different fun things that you add to it. I'm not going to be drawing uh, the door or the window or anything else. I'm not going to draw the dandelion right now. This is just the basic composition of the house and that's all I'm going to draw for this. Um, also real quick before I move on to the painting portion, there is a traceable for this so I'll link the traceable in the description but you can definitely download the traceable and use that for this tutorial if, if the drawing didn't work out for you or if you're don't want to do the drawing. Um, but what we're, what we're going to do next is we're going to use our three quarter flat wash brush and titanium white. So the top part of our mushroom has to be painted a, a thin layer of white first and that's going to get our red to be super bright against that dark background. If I just painted it red now it would be a little dark. I mean you could do it but if you want that red to really be bright and stand out I highly recommend doing a layer of titanium white on there first. So you're just, um, by thin layer, I mean that you're applying the paint, but it doesn't have to be solid. So if there's still blue showing through that paint, that is okay. It's, it'll be enough for it to give good coverage for our red layer. The um, direction of the strokes doesn't really matter at this point, but I am having my strokes contour, so they're going in a curved direction to fill up this shape. And then that smaller area on the lower left, I use the tip of the brush to kind of get that smaller um, area. And I'm going to take that tip of my brush and go around and go around here. So that's good when you're really defining the shape on the edge and doing your smaller line. Um, we can't do the red until that white dries, so I'm going to move on to the bottom piece of our mushroom, and this is unbleached titanium. And uh, I did rinse my brush off. There's still white on the brush, and that's okay. Um, it's not going to make too much of a difference whether or not that white was still on the brush or not. Unbleached titanium, <laughs> unbleached titanium, <laughs> it's a mouthful, um, is a very opaque color, so it gives really good coverage. Um, but this is going to be our first layer. I'm going to do some shading later on, but for now, this is going to be solid, that color. Also contouring strokes, so I'm using, I'm going, having my strokes go in the direction of the shape. It's a curvy shape, so um, we're filling it in using the full width of the brush towards the middle, using the tip of the brush towards the edges, so you really define the shape that you are filling in. And just fill this whole shape in with that solid uh, unbleached titanium color. Um, that brand that I'm using right there is the DecoArt Americana brand. Um, like I said, the student grade paints, um, different brands all have the, pretty much the same when the way they label their colors. So if you're using DecoArt Americana unbleached titanium, it's the same as Liquitex Basics un unbleached titanium. Same if you're using Artist Loft. Um, few few of the brands label them differently, but um, I always say to people who ask me about converting colors, um, sometimes if you just take the color swatch that I have on my website, you take that and you just kind of find a similar color to it and that's okay. Um, I did make a blog post on my website about converting different brands, but there's no way to possibly make a chart to convert every single brand. So sometimes you just got to improvise and do the best you can with what you have. And it's all about having fun, I think, um, than making everything perfect and exactly the way I do it. That's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to have fun. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and rinse off the unbleached titanium and um, get cad red medium hue. For me, that layer of white has dried, and even if it didn't dry all the way, if it picks up a little bit of white paint in there, that's no big deal. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do our red layer. Um, not, I'm not going to do any shading right now. I'm just going to cover my white layer with the red layer. That's all I'm going to do. And I'm still using that three-quarter flat brush going in the curved contouring strokes to fill in that shape. Thank you. 
this line down here you want to outline using the tip of the brush so that piece gets painted red as well. We'll be painting the under part of the mushroom next, and I have burnt umber and freshened up some of the unbleached titanium. I'll be using a round brush for this because it's, it's a smaller area that our big old brush can't really fit into well. So this, is, this is a number four round brush. So I have the burnt umber and I'm just filling in this shape right here, um, all of the burnt umber color. So this is the part that we see from the under part looking up and before this dries this step would probably work much better if this brown was dry but kind of wasn't patient with that I'm gonna load my brush in the unbleached titanium and I'm gonna do some lines so some texture lines on this area so I'm gonna just doing these curved lines from that bottom red piece and I'm curving up to the top part of our mushroom and it kind of looks neat with that unbleached titanium sort of blending with that brown and I'm going to rinse off and I'm going to go back over my red here again um, if this step doesn't work for you because the paint isn't drying and it's all meshing together you'll want to just wait for that to dry and then you can go back over and touch up that red but I did that really quick Next, I'm gonna do a little bit of shading in the red part of the mushroom. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my brown that I have on my palette here, and I'm gonna distribute it into the red and make about two shades darker of a color red than our first red. Just a little bit more brown in there. So about two shades darker, um, not too dark because then that brown is just gonna take over super fast and it's gonna get way too dark. But I'm just gently, uh, applying that darker darker brownish red color just to the bottom right part of the mushroom give it a little bit of a shadowy area down there and I'm gonna take it and add it to that piece down there um, and then I'm just gonna gently brush it up into the rest of the red if you need to go back and add some red and have that red blend out my red was a little was not dry all the way so it was able to blend back out but if yours is dry you can always go back with more red um, then make two shades lighter of, or two tints lighter. So add white to your red. So it's a lighter red. And I'm just going to very, very gently add this lighter red to the upper left part of the mushroom and gently blend it into the middle piece. So, um, going back in there, with a teeny bit of a lighter color just on the edge. Um, again, you don't want to add too much white in there. We don't want it to turn into a light pink color. And I'm just kind of doing some textured strokes to uh, loosely, expressively blend it back in. So we have um, different color reddish tones in our mushroom now. So it's not all solid color. It gives it some interesting color to look at. Um, I'm going to do the same thing to the unbleached titanium bottom piece. So I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to the unbleached color and so it's about two shades darker and I'm just going to um, start kind of on the left and then I'm going to just stroke down to create some darker um, strokes in there. I'm not going to cover this whole piece it just gives it kind of some shadowy some different color uh, in that in the initial color that we applied so it's not all solid color then I can go back in there and add some more unbleached titanium. Um, the whole point is just to give it some different color variation in there. Makes it look more interesting and more colorful. And some textured, textured strokes. Filling it in. Make sure you have coverage here. So there shouldn't be any green or blue showing through. If there is, you want to go back over with another coat. If it, for some reason that is still showing through. Because it's not going to give coverage until we give it a second coat. Okay. 
So we're gonna go ahead and paint our chimney piece next. And I'm gonna need black because I'm gonna be making gray. So I'll get my three quarter washed off and I'm gonna grab my, um, this is a number four round brush. So I loaded Mars black on my palette, fresh and titanium white if you need to. Make a gray by mixing black and white together. You only need a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of black to make gray and then paint your flute part of the chimney. If you wanna give it a two-toned color look, you can um, add a darker color at the bottom and blend it up to a lighter color towards the left part of it. So you wanna just fill that in solid. And then when you're done with that, I'm going back, that's a little stroke of white in there. But when you're done with that, you can go and um, with the red, um, and fill the top piece with the red if, if that's what you want if you want the top um, part of the chimney to be red I didn't white this area out first I guess I could have but it was just an extra step that I didn't want to do there but you could see the difference when you just add the red um, and the white wasn't on there first but that's okay so I'm just filling that shape in solid with the cad red medium hue color I'm still using that number four round brush. And then we won't do the white spots until all that red is dry because that will cause a big mess if we tried to do all those white spots now. None of that red is dry, especially the under layer. It's, it's all gonna be pretty dry before we do that. Um, but we're gonna go and start on our grass, our beautiful grass that we have, some grass texture. I'm gonna freshen up my greens. So the same two greens that I used for the base color, the Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and the Light Olive Green. And I'll be using a number eight round brush. So it's a round brush that's larger than that other brush. Blow it in the water and I'm gonna pinch my brush to give it kind of a nice point. Well, shaky camera again there. Grab a little bit of white and um, mix it with the olive green. So with this grass, I'm gonna start in the back and I'm gonna start out lighter and I'm gonna gradually get my grass blades to be darker as I work my way to the front. Twist your brush to where the paint gets distributed right there on the tip of your brush. And we're gonna make some tall grass blades starting in the back where that horizon line is. And I'm just gonna gently brush my um, stroke of the paintbrush up and down to create some tips of grass and um, add a little bit of white in there. That's gonna give you some color variation, some brighter grass blades there in the back. And they're kind of going at different angles as well. So I'm just gently stroking my brush upwards to create that texture. And it's kind of like you're flicking the brush. So you're starting at the bottom and you're flicking it super fast and you're kind of releasing the pressure um, as you get to the top to create the tip of the grass blade. So I'm just adding different amounts of that white to that lighter green. I'm not going all the way down. So this is the back layer part of the grass. There's going to be darker layers that I'm going to apply next. So I'm not going to the bottom of our canvas just yet. So I'm going to do a couple shades darker by adding that darker green into that lighter green color. Twist the brush, get that paint to the tip. And then we're gonna start uh, kind of below where I've started before. And um, of course it's gonna mix with it because that lighter green is not dry yet. But um, I'm not gonna go all the way up with that color. I'm gonna go kind of maybe halfway up, but you can see it's creating a second layer of darker. So when we go from lighter in the back to darker in the front, it's gonna give our painting area, the grass area, um, some dimension because things in the back tend to be lighter, things in the front tend to be darker. So I'm just gonna gradually add more and more of that darker green, and I'm just gonna keep painting layers of that grass and working my way down to the bottom of the canvas. Notice how I'm leaving the part underneath the mushroom blank. Um, that part is not filled in because there will be cobblestone. The little rocks are gonna go in that area. So there's no sense in painting all that grass right there. So I'm purposefully making that grass kind of sway around that area. So no grass in that area. So I'm gonna go ahead, rinse off, and I'll be doing the rock cobblestone a little pathway rock next. So switching my brush to that smaller round brush because these are smaller shapes. I'm just gonna make a random gray color on my palette. Just a medium gray, mix a little bit of black into the white, doesn't have to be exact. You don't even have to mix it all the way. You can keep it kind of a two-tone look with the white and the gray. Um, but basically, 
I'm just going to paint little oval shapes right there underneath our mushroom. So different sh different um, sizes. So vary the shape a little bit, kind of stagger our little rocks. Um, I suppose you can do something different down here if you didn't want to do the little rock pathway. You can um, leave it blank if you wanted to keep it simple or if you wanted to make a, like a little dirt pathway but or get creative. So it's up to you. There's lots of different details in this painting that you can change. And I did sloppily added that black to my palette. I'm going to go back and make a darker shadowy area on my rocks here. So loading that just to the bottom part. So I'm adding a little bit of that super dark gray on the bottom and I'm actually going to use my finger to just blend that in. So I'm kind of smushing it with my finger. Blends that gray with the black. I'll be doing the door and the windows and all the small details on the house next. So I have burnt umber and I, I'll get my number four round brush again. You'll need a small round brush because these are some small details that we're adding. I'm going to go ahead and do our door here. So the door is just a basic um, shape door with a curved top to it. So I'm just going to take my brown and kind of sketch this out with my paintbrush. So it's going to start out vertical, it's going to curve, and then it's going to go vertical again. So I did the shape of the door first. And we don't have to be perfect with it. If it's lopsided, that's okay. It gives it more character. And then when I fill this in, so I'm going to use brown and white. So I'm going to load my brush in a little bit of brown and then load in my brush in a little bit of white. I'm going to do all vertical strokes. So this is going to create the wood texture or the kind of an impression of wood texture. So I'm doing the brown and the white and I'm painting up and down strokes blending that those two colors together and it's creating a a varied sort of door uh, wooden door look to the mushroom Next, I'll do the windows of our mushrooms. So I have cadmium, yellow, medium, hue. You can use any yellow, it doesn't have to be that exact one. And I'm gonna brighten this yellow by adding white to it. By adding white to the yellow, it also makes it more opaque and gives you good coverage. And then I'll be using Mars Black in there as well because I'll be doing the little lamp, um, little lantern light that's next to the door. And also the door itself gets outlined with black. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now with the number four round brush loaded in the black. I'm just going to take that black and I'm going to outline the outer part of the door. This would look adorable if you did a little rock um, or yeah, a little brickwork or gray rocks around that. But I kept it simple, just a black outline. With the black, if it doesn't seem to be very flowy when you're trying to draw paint these things. Um, a little bit of water in there helps that black to flow a little bit better, um, but not too much black or not, not too much water. And then I'm going to do our little lantern here. So I'm going to make a pointed sort of curved triangle tent shape and then fill that in solid. And then I'm going to go down diagonally and um, both directions, but it's not going to go to a point. It's going to be flat on the bottom. So there's our lantern shape. That's going to get filled in yellow, uh, but not right now because that black is too wet to fill that in yellow just yet. I'm going to go ahead, rinse, dry, and do our windows. So the base of the window is yellow. Add a little bit of white to that yellow. Like I said, the white makes that um, yellow more opaque. So add that to the yellow and go ahead and do your window shape. So these window shapes are just going to be the sort of half circle oblong window shapes. Um, if you wanted to do square, you can do that. If you wanted to do circle, there's so many different design variations you can do with this painting. But uh, with these windows, I'm just going to grab my T-square really, really quick so I can make my windows even so they're not um, positioned and lop lopsided. So I just kind of use that to measure the 
the height of that window on the left and fill it in solid. And then when that yellow dries, we can go back and do the frame of the window, but we can't do that until the yellow dries. I'm gonna bravely fill our lantern in here with that yellow. It accidentally dragged a little bit of black in there, but it wasn't too bad. Um, nothing where I have to paint over it and it doesn't make too much of a difference. So with our drawing piece, um, you most likely have chalk lines still showing. And as long as everything's dry in that area, this will work. Um, but if it's not dry, we run the risk of dragging wet paint into this. But I'm going to use a baby wipe. I find baby wipes to be a good solution for erasing chalk because chalk is water soluble. I've used a wet paintbrush in the past, but that tends to get messy using all that water on the canvas. But a baby wipe has just the right amount of moisture where you can wipe off your chalk lines and erase it. So that's my recommendation for that. You can also get a paper towel and lightly damp that paper towel and use that to erase the lines. So what I'm doing here next is the, the spot. So this is a fun step, super easy. All I'm doing is applying titanium white to a number eight round brush and I'm painting circles all over the mushroom. I'm gonna have my circles be all different shapes and size. Some of them are so tiny that they're just a dot from the tip of the brush. Some are medium size, some are large. Um, some are going to be um, out of shape circles. I'll show you here in a second. Some are going to go off the edge. So you do the half circle. So it's hanging right there on the edge. So a nice variety of circles all over our mushroom. Don't worry about shading or anything like that. In fact, I didn't even go back over and do any shading on my circles. This one right here is going to be kind of a large one and then our little mushroom that's on top of our chimney I did little dots of circles This circle right here, I decided to make it more out of shape since that mushroom piece is dipping down in that area. And then I'll go ahead and use white to paint the doorknob. Of course, if you wanted your doorknob a different color, you can do that. White gives it just enough contrast so that it shows up. I'll be doing the dandelion and the vine next. So I'm going to get my number four rinsed off and I'll be using the darker green color. Um, the number four is what I'll be using here. And so slightly water down that darker green, twist that to get that on the tip of your brush because we'll be painting a thin line for our dandelion. Then I'm going to start on the bottom, sort of in the middle area of this grass right here and paint upwards a very uneven wavy line, very loose. And I'll do my leaf here. So with the leaf, I like to grab different colors of that green, some more white and some of that lighter green. But I press hard on my brush to make my stroke thicker to create that leaf shape. So I'm pressing down and using all the bristles for that and then releasing to get my leaf to get narrow and go to a point. So just a basic stem and two leaves. Nothing too realistic. Maybe I could add some more grass blades around there at the bottom. And I'm going to paint some smaller grass blades that are overlapping the base of our 
mushroom that just kind of makes it look like that there's some overlapping of the grass there. Grab some lighter color in there and do a few little lighter grass blades in there. And then I'm just going to kind of distribute those shorter grass blades around some of the cobblestone, but I won't fill it up too much. Um, since we have the green ready to go, we're going to do our vine next. So again, twisting that brush when you load it really gets that color to go to the tip of the brush. But we have this vine that's growing up the side of the house. And we can really have fun with this. Create a, a twisty, curvy line that is growing up the side of the house. And twists around, curves around the window, goes up to the mushroom top. And then you can do little leaf shapes that are coming out of the side of the vine. So just grabbing some lighter green in there to create different variations of that green. So I'm just painting a very basic pointed leaf or rounded pointed leaf shape coming out from the vine and nothing too complicated. You can have fun with this vine and have it wrap around even more, add some more greenery, so that's up to you. But like I said, I in the beginning, I kept this design simple and basic so that you can get creative if you wanted to, add your own special touches to it. Then I like to grab a little bit of white and the green and paint one side of the leaves. A little bit of light on the vine gives a, some highlight to our vine so that some parts of it pop and stand out. Then I'm going to rinse and dry my number four round brush and you'll need some fresh titanium white. We're going to do the dandelion little stem seeds next. So load that white right there on the tip of your brush and we're going to start in the middle so at the point of our stem and I'm just going to flick the brush and drag it outwards to create each of those little strips. So I'm just starting in the middle and I'm flicking the brush very fast and pretty much releasing pressure as I flick it. It creates the point of the little dandelion seed. So I'm just going to keep going with that, um, going around in a, a circle and make sure that that middle part, that middle piece is going to be nice and bright, bright because there's a lot of paint in that area. Um, but the outer part is going to look more delicate um, because you're kind of releasing the pressure and letting the paint dry. On some of the outer pieces, you don't have to do this to all of them, but on some of them, I'm doing little, um, little carrot shaped um, diagonal lines for the, the edges of our dandelion seeds. So like two or three little diagonal dashed lines. And like I said, you don't have to do it on all of them, but a lot of them, it creates in that um, dandelion look. And then if you wanted to make some pieces flying away, I didn't do that for some reason, but if you wanted to have some pieces sort of floating off into the sky, that would look really pretty. And, um, but instead of doing that, I did these little fairy light glowing light. I don't know if they're fireflies. They could be little fairy glowing lights or fireflies, but it's just a fun technique to do these blurry little lights. So all you do is do a dot with your paint and you take your finger and you smear it outwards. And it looks really good against that dark background. So you can make them different sizes. You can even add yellow to it if you really wanted them to look like fireflies or glowing lights. You can um, add a bit of yellow into your white, but I didn't do that. So dot, take your finger and smear it outwards. And then you can go back over, um, I'll show you here in a second. If you wanted your middle to be even more brighter, you can add more white in the middle of your glowing circles, little orbs. So you just take your paint and add an extra little white dot right in the center of those.
I'm going to go in here and highlight this bottom line piece with the white. Mix it with some red. So white and red mixed together. Just that part right there to get that piece to pop a little bit. Then I'm going to rinse dry and do the framing on the window next. So using the burnt umber and go ahead and do your little plus sign in the middle of the window and then outline the outer part of it. I'm making this bottom piece a little bit thicker because that ended up going diagonal. Sometimes when I'm recording, I'm working at weird angles. So when I try to do perpendicular lines, they don't quite come out perpendicular as I hope, but that's okay. Nothing has to be perfect in um, our paintings. In fact, little flaws give your paintings so much more character. And then do the little plus sign inside of our lamp. Going back over my black around the door a little bit there too. Rinse dry and I'll be doing some more details here. So there's a cute little uh, smaller mushroom growing right next to the house. So I'm just gonna refreshen up my unbleached titanium and grab um, that color. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this second mushroom. So this bottom piece is a very uh, thin, bottom mushroom piece, a little bit wider on the bottom, gets kind of narrow at the top. Um, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit before I do the red piece on the top, but um, I'll rinse and grab a little bit more lighter green. I'm gonna do some more grass texture. It's really dark in the lower left area of my painting. So I went in and added lighter grass blades, give it a little bit more contrast in that area. Thought about putting something specific in that area, but decided to just keep it simple and just do some more lighter grass blades. Um, but like I said already, you can get creative and add different elements to this painting if you wanted to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my red piece next. So with the, the CAD red, and I didn't white this out. Um, same with like when I did the chimney, I didn't white out that pe top piece first. Just got the red and did the mushroom shape above it. So your half circle sort of wavy bottom piece, fill it in. Um, if it's not giving you good coverage, you may have to wait for it to dry and then do a second coat of red. But for the most part, um, mine had okay coverage. And then wait for that to dry before you do your white spots on that. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm gonna add um, some highlight to my window. So I, on the right side of my window, I'm just gonna take that white and do a of that curved line, not to cover all that brown, but just to give it a pop of white in that area. And I'm doing a little bit of white on the right side of that top triangular piece. A few little bits of white inside of the light area. And then on the right side of the door, I loosely, loosely outlined um, the outer part of the door with a little bit of white. Um, very loosely adding a white highlight to the tops of some of those rocks. That's kind of a really cool, effective technique because it looks like the light is kind of making the rocks a little bit shiny at the top. Um, and then if your red is dry, you can do the spots, but I'm actually gonna do some more highlight on the, the dandelion leaf. So a few little white strokes on the leaves gives your dandelion leaf a little bit of um, contrast in that area. So wait for your, your red to dry, and then you can go in and do your little white spots on that mushroom. So that is 
pretty much it, my friends. This super fun mushroom fairy house tutorial is coming to its conclusion. I can't wait to see all of your different variations. If you are part of our big Facebook group now, I can't wait to see all the different creative things that you come up with. If you didn't know about the Facebook group, um, you can look up um, Step by Step Penny with Tracy Kiernan Facebook group. There's a larger group um, and you can share all of your paintings in there. I'm just doing last minute grass texture strokes in there but that is it i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial i had a lot of fun with this design and thank you for painting with me thanks for watching <laughs>